Barbie. The name conjures up feelings for many generations of women and men across the world. And as you've likely heard, the plastic wonder is featured in a new movie. Barbie, the film, raked in a whopping $155 million this past weekend, making it the biggest opening for a film this year. Jeffrey Brown looks at the global phenomenon as part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. What are you doing here? I'm coming with you. Did you bring your rollerblades? I literally go nowhere without them. Barbie is getting a big screen makeover in director Greta Gerwig's new film, but it's just the latest update in a long history. Barbie, you're beautiful. Barbie, her original full name was Barbara Millicent Roberts, was created in 1959 by Ruth Handler for the Mattel Toy Company. She stood 11 and a half inches tall. That mostly hasn't changed, but her look certainly has as the blonde, slim-waisted, full-chested doll became a cultural phenomenon of the post-war era. Her male counterpart, Ken, was brought on board in 1961. Worth noting, he first came with straight arms that didn't bend and a head that could turn only left and right. It was 1980 before Mattel released the first black and Latina dolls actually named Barbie. And in 2016, three new body types were introduced curvy, petite, and tall. Also changed who she is, including her work. She saved lives as a surgeon, traveled to space as an astronaut, and even run for president, a few times, in fact. She's had over 250 careers, from CEO to Canadian Mountie. She still sells plenty across the globe, found in more than 150 countries. There's like a DJ. Mattel estimates that more than 100 dolls are sold every minute. And of course, she's on social media with some 19 million followers across platforms. An icon of the LGBTQ plus community, Barbie drag shows have cropped up this summer in anticipation of the film. Now Gerwig's film, starring Ryan Gosling as Ken and Margot Robbie as Barbie, clearly has some high heels to fill. And joining me now is Andrea Nevins. She's director and writer of the documentary, Tiny Shoulders, Rethinking Barbie. Thanks for joining us. So we are deep into the world of cultural touchstones here, right? How can one small doll mean so many different things? Well, this was a doll that was not like any doll that had preceded her. Most dolls were baby dolls. And baby dolls were a way for little girls to uh, enact potentially the only job that they could have in society, which was to be a mother. And that was the, the sole aspiration. This doll came about and it was an adult doll and it had breasts. And thus it, it almost instantly absorbed all of the contested space of femininity at the time and continues to today. And that has come to mean different things to different generations of Barbie buyers, Barbie lovers, and Barbie haters. Precisely, so she rides the waves of feminism um, again and again and again, from being adored early on because she was one of the only toys that girls could play with that allowed them to think about their adult selves and not only allowed them to think about their adult selves, but allowed them into a space that they weren't allowed, um, meaning to be doctors, to be astronauts. And then when the uh, second wave of feminism came around in the early 70s, she was reviled. She was everything that feminists didn't want to be, which was an object. She was she she came to symbolize an object as, a, as opposed to an aspirational toy. And then she comes back again in the 80s and then she gets uh, the full backlash of the uh, third wave of feminism backlash in the 90s and so on and so on. Tell me a little bit about your own documentary, what you were able to see at, at, clearly at a key moment for Mattel and in the history of Barbie. Yes, it was a pivot point for them. They had had great success with Barbie for a long time, but this was a moment where they felt the doll might cease to exist. Barbie was a wildly revolutionary toy. Barbie became things that real women hadn't become. She had broken barriers. These dolls enable girls to tell stories about dreams. 
She's been around 55 years, but the last few years have been trying for the Barbie. This was uh, 2014, and um, a friend of mine was working on the doll. She said that she was so excited to go to work every morning because they would sit as a group of women and try and think about what it means to be a woman in our society today and, uh, and thus imbue the doll with that with the positive aspects of that. And so it was very fun for her to go into work. And as she said that, I thought, this doll is such an excellent lens to look at the last 60 years of feminism. Would it be possible for me to go and film this re-ideation of this toy? And uh, it took seven months because they were really frightened of, uh, of letting anybody in. But I think they ultimately decided that, that illuminating not our the inside would keep them authentic and accountable. And so they let me in on all of the meetings as they thought through who this doll could be and all of the ramifications of that. Who is Barbie now pre Greta Gerwig's film? That's a very good question. She is still a toy and was a toy that uh, managed to really take hold again during the pandemic because the kind of toy that she is allows little girls and boys to, uh, to play using their imagination. And because of the changes that they made in making her curvy and many different colors and uh, handicapped Barbie, that made her more appealing to parents who were afraid of that old stigma where women would be uh, put into a box, so to speak, um, as opposed to allowed uh, every opportunity. That was the doll that Greta got to take out into the world. Um, so now I think she's going to be seen in a very different way. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. What has Greta Gerwig done with this complicated history? Um, she's allowed us to get inside the head of a little girl in the most magical way, meaning when a little girl plays with Barbie, the world is hers. Everything that she decides comes from inside of her and her imagination can be limitless because there aren't doors closing in her face. She's not subject to the male gaze. So it's a very particular kind of world. And Greta has allowed us to see what that world would look like without men um, and the choices that women can make and the freedom that they have in a non-patriarchal world. So it's really quite an amazing thing to watch. And she does it with a reverence and humor and joy and um, and a wee bit of rage. And uh, and so it's just a, a really fun way to re-examine this doll. Given what you know about the history, do you expect even more twists and turns for Barbie in the future? Absolutely, because, uh, because she is subject to the same backlashes that we as women are. So I sadly feel certain that uh, that backlash will occur, but maybe we've taken a giant step and it will be smaller this time. We're also seeing this uh, phenomenon of Barbie core. Pink is everywhere, right? Pink is being embraced. What's going on? I will take it right now because it's very rare in our culture that we celebrate femininity and celebrate femininity positively. And so I will take this Barbie core pink moment as, as a way of saying women are fabulous and they can be feminine as well as be powerful. Andrea Nevins is director of Tiny Shoulders Rethinking Barbie. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you. As always, there's a lot more online, including a look at fun facts behind Barbie's lasting appeal. That's at pbs.org newshour. And that